Hello and welcome to this edition of the show. I'm your host Brian Mallard. We got Tim Childry over there running the controls, and today we have a very special guest in here. One uh, person I've been watching for a while. His work is fantastic, Mr. Sammy Saxon. Sammy, appreciate you coming in, man. How you doing? Great. Great to have you on board here. Uh, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. Where were you born? Um, I was actually born in Fort Benning, and I grew up in Tobleton, Georgia. Oh. And then um, my mom remarried, and we just kind of traveled around the country, basically. Cool. Where'd you go? Um, El Paso was like the biggest place oh. we went. You remember a lot of that, or were you too young? I was old enough to remember. I think it was like 10 or 11. Was it fun? It was awesome. I love the West. Like I've been to California, Nevada, and it's awesome. Um, now, uh, what did your parents do? My mom was a cosmetologist. Um, my stepdad was in the military, and my real dad is a police officer. Cool. Now, do, do were they artistic at all? Like, my mom is. She was an artist. She used to do a lot of illustrations and. My uncle also, he was a bigger inspiration for me, but he did like, uh, what's it called? Folk art. Folk art, cool. Tell me a little bit about his work. Who was he? Um, his name is Sidney. He used to do, he used to paint on like larger pieces of wood. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how or where he would, where they would go, but he never really like giving them out. He would just keep them for himself. <laughs> <laughs> so what made you interested in photography um when i was a kid my mom would bring home these like kodak 110 cameras Mm -hmm. and i would always cry over them so (laughs) i think from like an early age i just became obsessed with it and eventually um when i got into college that's when i really picked it up Wow. I started doing it a lot more. Now, there is a, a, quite a leap between a 110 camera, because I remember those, <laughs> and uh, and what you use today. Tell me a little bit about your education. I studied at CSU, and I started as a painter, and I didn't really consider photography art at the moment at that time, just because, you know, it was just, I, just, I was obsessed with it, but I didn't consider it art. Right. But then I took a photography course, and... I realized that you can like convey the same concepts in film that you were trying to present in painting. So oh, right. I kind of steered towards photography. You know, that, that, that kind of reminds me, we had a, a guest on last week. Um, actually, her name was Cora Lynn. She actually owns a, a tattoo shop here in town. I think we know her. Yeah, she's a very nice, young, a very talented young lady. But uh, she was telling us the how how it's progressed as far as tattoos and that a lot of the people that she hires she won't even look at them unless they come out of art school simply because they can convey the ideas just as you said that that you know they can put on canvas or whatever but they can convey it and put it on i guess in her case the human skin and uh you know it's pretty interesting uh because these days art students seem to be i know when i went to music school which was (laughs) <laughs> many years ago uh, <laughs> we're not going there but uh, we had the art institute upstairs mm-hmm. and it was pretty cut and dried then I mean it was yeah. you know hey you know get a canvas and, and that's it right. now art has just exploded it goes from photography to tattoo and uh, you know the whole gamut right yeah and it's pretty neat it is really neat and uh, and something I'd like to uh, point out is is like I grew up, you know, seeing photography, uh, you know, in, in books and stuff, and it was like, there's the photography that is a picture of a house or a picture of a road, and there's a, and there are other means of photography, which actually, I'm not a photographer, like, at all, but uh, made me interested in that, because, like, the stuff, the stuff that you do is very artsy, and it's not just, like, textbook, you know, things like that. Um, tell me a little bit about how you got into how did you kind of veer in the direction of the sort of thing that you do now, which is very artsy, as opposed to the textbook stuff? Um, and what made you decide to go in that direction? Was it because you used to be an artist? I believe so. Well, at CSU, I was painting surreal stuff, and mm-hmm. my focus was more on surreal paintings. And I took a graphic designing course while I was taking photography, and I started kind of mixing the two interesting and at the time i was shooting with film mm-hmm. 
and we had negative scanners. So from that, I was scanning in film and then just kind of playing around with it. Right. And from there, I kind of, you know, became married to ph- Photoshop and digital right. cameras because digital cameras came out right, or digital SLRs came out right when I was about to graduate. Mm-hmm. I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, did, did, was, it, was it a hard thing? Because my brother's a photographer. And he, he was he swore by film for years and years and years and and uh, of course there's the you know it's a it's a it's an Im- a digital image as opposed to actually light reflected on the paper you know which is what film was uh, was it difficult to d- did you have a difficult time accepting the concept of digital or was it just a natural thing for you I did have a hard time accepting digital um, I had a very close friend of mine Hiro. He's a photographer from Japan, and every time he visited at home, he would bring home, bring back like a newer digital camera. Mm-hmm. And for the longest time, I fought with him about how film was better. But we would go out and we take pictures together. Right. And then it would take me like a couple of days to develop mine and <laughs> scan it in. And he's sitting there playing with his like the night after the shoot. So I'm like, maybe I should try digital. It does have that tremendous advantage where you can just literally plug your your camera into the computer. And then I started working for a magazine, and they want the pictures right away. So right. Out of convenience, it was just you know a yeah. no-brainer just to switch to digital. Right. Now, uh, tell me a little bit about this magazine that you're looking for. I work at Southern Views Magazine. It's a local kind of a society magazine. Mm-hmm. We have we do a little bit of art in it. I do mostly the graphic designing, some of the page layouts, and photo shoots, mostly cool. photography. So is that mostly what you do? Uh, like, is the majority of your work for the magazine, or do you have is the majority of the work that you get for your own stuff? It's it just varies. Usually, I'm shooting on my own, but my day job, I guess, would be the magazine. Right, right. And I, you know, I can tell that actually, um, because I was wondering. You sent me a, a couple of uh, Sammy's pictures, which right. we'll go through, and you know, a little later on in the show. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was looking at them, and they were very unusual in the fact that they weren't, I guess, just your studio pictures, you know, of your girlfriend. No, all in those glamour shots. And stuff. You, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you looked at them, you could tell how much creativity and whatever he put in. I said, I bet he does a lot of advertising work. Yeah, um, you you could just tell. It, it's really cool, and, and it's funny because I'll go down because I host up in Mike at Fountain City, and uh, I'll go down there to get ready to set up, and and Sammy here always, you know, he's sitting down there at a table with a bunch of people around him, and it's like it's really cool because you know he, he's clearly you know has uh, you know he networks and he he's got clientele. Um, how did you build that? Ooh, I'm horrible at talking to people. <laughs> it's just I, I'm bad at it. Um, usually it's I'll meet somebody and they'll do the promoting for me like I don't know <laughs> start. Um, networking I don't really play around with social media as well um, I'll usually let my fiance do all that but usually through social media I guess that would be the best way to put it well, you put all your energy into doing the actual the actual product, which is cool. Exactly. I mean, and no, no, you say this young lady does most of your... Yeah, she's in the studio over here in the yeah. green room. She was. She, you don't want to get in front of a camera, do you? She, <laughs> said, she said no. Okay. I don't blame her. I don't put the camera on me that much. So. <laughs> and by the way, congratulations, uh, fiance. Wow. Yeah. It's congratulations, been, guys. I didn't know that. It's been a while. It's been a very long time. been a while. <laughs> So it was yeah. one of those things like, see, I just recently got married, and I've dated my, my wife for seven years. And uh, so, <laughs> hey, I, I'm on my 12th anniversary today, guys, so I want to blow you all away. Yeah. Stacy, I'm not alone. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so Tim, 12 years, and uh, congratulations to him as well. We got just getting started, well, sort of, and uh, officially, and we got a veteran over here. Yeah, I told Brian, hurry up and get out of my No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, uh, Tim, you want to start uh, dialing up the thing uh, for, for a commercial here. Um, would you ever dabble back in film again? I've been wanting to. I have a friend. She's also a photographer, um, Amanda. But she's always trying to get me to like shoot with her 
medium format camera. Right, right. But it's kind of hard to go back to it because I'm so used to the convenience of digital. Mm-hmm. Now, is it just a convenience or is there a difference in how the thing actually works too? Because like if you're driving an old 65 Chevrolet pickup truck with a gear shift on the floor and then you get in a modern like Kia Soul and it's like when you go back to the old truck again, it's like, wow, can I drive? Is it anything like that? Kind of, because I'm so used to seeing the product right away mm-hmm. and being able to change the lighting if I need to. There's that. And then um, you want your program to use digital cameras and then looking back at film and you don't see the digital panels. It's just. Right. I can totally understand that. Yeah. I'm a photographer on my cell phone. Tell you now, what now when you went to <laughs> art school before we go to commercial, when you went to art school, how far, I guess, see how I should phrase this, how far back, uh, I know you use film, but how far back did you guys go? What I'm asking, I assume, is when I was growing up and you were a photographer, you didn't have Photoshop and Lightroom and, and you know, Dropbox. And, I mean, right. back then it was like, you better wait to the perfect time of day or recreate it and go up, take the picture, you know, get it developed. I mean, it was like a, a huge process. Yeah. But how far back did you guys go as far as? Uh, we pretty much started back at that point. Um, it was, wow, it's been a while. Yeah, we had the dark room. We didn't really play around with it in Photoshop just yet for the class like I had to learn how to do that on my own Mm -hmm. and then I took a graphic designing class after I was done with the traditional photography part but it was pretty much the same just black and white Um, I had a Canon AE-1 was the one I had to use for the class you know, I, I know some of these students down there just, just really ticked me off because I'm down there trying to film something and then some young lady walked in with a $5,000 camera <laughs> that she checked out from the college and I was yeah. just like, you've got to be joking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the first camera I got was used for forensics and that was kind of an Ooh. inspiration too. My dad being a sheriff, um, he borrowed it from the police department and... After he sent it to me, he was like, yeah, we used it for forensic stuff and crime scene photos. I'm like, Ooh. Okay, so that's kind of scary but awesome at the same time. <laughs> the things that Lynn saw. Yeah, it gives it personality. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of personality? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but don't know that we want to know. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to go check out a commercial here. We'll be right back with some pictures of Sammy Shot. Come join us every week for Open Mic Thursdays at Fountain City Coffee with your host, Brian Mallard. Registration begins at 6.30. Show runs from 7 to 10. Uptown Columbus, where the vibe is. Beauty at the Gypsy Cherub, 3760 Woodruff Road, Columbus, Georgia. Class is back in style. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Delicious things to eat. The popcorn can't be beat. The sparkling drinks are just dandy, the chocolate bars and the candy. So let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Welcome back to the show. Special guest, Sammy Saxon. We're about to uh, look at some things. Um, do you have, like, songwriters have a muse? Do you have a muse? Do you have uh, something that you follow? Ooh. 
I find inspiration in pretty much everything. Like, be from news um, to paintings. Mm-hmm. I mean... Okay, now, from, from an old man to... Uh, this is just some uh, suggestions. You better say... This young lady sitting over here. <laughs> yes, she, she is a very man. <laughs> <laughs> she tells me of something stupid. She's very open with. Well, now that's really important because, like Stacy, you know, I'm a, I'm a songwriter, and I've got songs that Stacy just says that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard, and it's like, yeah, that's awesome because you know, uh, that's a good honest feedback because you know some people might be like, eh, that's good, baby. No, no, she's like that is stupid. <laughs> yeah, she's very open to. Yeah, horror movies. I love scary movies. That's been a part of my life since I was a kid, so I'm obsessed with it. Did you ever see the movie from 1973, Don't Be Afraid of the Dark? Yes. Awesome movie, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the remake. Yeah, the, I saw the remake, and though it was it was well done and cool and everything, it wasn't quite as scary to me. The other one still freaks me out, and I'm like 45. <laughs> I'll tell you what, let's look at some uh, pictures here, and uh, we'll talk about them a little bit. Okay, first picture up, and um, this was just personal shots for you, or was this part of an ad campaign? or It was for a model. She's local. She's now in New York doing Kevin Klein. Wow, mm-hmm. that is cool. And it was for a portfolio, I believe. Beauty shot. Beauty shot. Wow. Um, this is Maggie. She's actually about to do Victoria's Secret in Paris. Wow. Yeah. Runway show. So this is one of the reasons I love photography. <laughs> <laughs> we discovered her here. Um, that is so cool. Through Facebook, actually. Now, i got to ask this question. Do you act as, like, agent at all, or do you just do the work, or how's that go? We dabble in it sometimes, but we just leave it to the professionals. We have a manager that basically does all this stuff he's right. amazing at it he's cool. monitoring us and telling us what to do career-wise um, he's very important because we kind of deviate away from what we're supposed to do and he'll get us back on track oh that's great yeah, excellent it's very important to have someone that's been in the industry for a long time too yeah so I've, I've recently started watching the show entourage and uh the the guy on there vince he uh or Vinny, he's uh uh, star and his like best friend used to work at Sabaro. He's <laughs> he's his manager, so it's interesting. You're talking about it's important to get somebody who's been in the industry for a long time, and that's one of the, the points of the show that the guy has not. But back to the pictures. It's another model model portfolio shot. We shot that in New York. You actually went to New York and shot this. Hmm? Very wow. cool. That was actually shot downtown um, in one of the buildings that's been renovated. Yeah, that, that, that's really cool. I mean, how did you guys get her to levitate? A lot of Photoshop. Ah, there you go. <laughs> you know, I, I started off with Photoshop 1, probably, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got, I've got up to 4 right now, CS4, but, uh, oh gosh, I couldn't learn half of it. How long did it take you to learn Photoshop as a photographer? I was a nerd in college. I didn't do much of anything. like So I just stayed at home and played around in it. It took me maybe like a year to get the basics down. Wow. And then from there. Been there, done that, so don't worry about it. You're not a nerd. Because I'm not going to call myself one. But you know, <laughs> that, that's one of the things, and I kind of touched on it earlier, that you know, photography has gotten, I don't want to say easier, it's gotten easier in the fact that you can create what you would like to as far as you know shadows or or so forth and so on but it's really in a way gotten harder because you know the cameras are are, are a lot easier to get what you want yeah but at the same time not only do you have to you just don't you can't you've gotten to a point where you just don't learn photography anymore you have to learn photoshop lightroom and and you know it and this believe me i know just from just playing with it Mm -hmm. and yeah, some of the stuff I see, like I could never do that, you know, because I can take a, a picture really easily with my cell phone, but I can't do that with a cell phone. You know, no, I'm, 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 I'm going to ask Sammy some advice after this because I'm pretty much go up there and hit the, uh, you know, quick select uh, <laughs> and, you know, then try to erase what I didn't get. Right. And it's very I can put text on a picture. <laughs> 
And so let me see if I can get this next picture up. Okay, that was a it was a shot for my college, my thesis work, but I entered into a contest and then it was one of the winners. Cool. And it actually got recreated by Eva Longoria, I think in two thousand and thirteen. Yeah. And you know, this like I said, this is this is a perfect example of the fact that he had to get the shot you know, and the model to get the right position and so forth and uh, so on. But then he actually looks like he had someone or he had a light, you know, right above the right. surface to shine down and hit that model at the right angle. Yeah. It's all fake. And it's, <laughs> it is, but it, it's absolutely amazing what you can create with these things these days. And the fact that it was basically covered, it was recreated by... Uh, mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that. She actually... I did all this in Photoshop because I can't swim. Right. <laughs> and she actually did it the hard way. She got, like, this huge water tank. Wow. And she kept having to, like, jump into it constantly. I don't know why they... Oh, yes, right. They tied her in chains, which made it hard for her to swim. And when we got the meter. She was, like, really mad at me because she asked me how to do it to have a large water tank. And I was like, <laughs> no, we... Oh, that's a water up. tank? I could have done this on She had to do it in the water tank, but... Wow. Wow. I did it on top of a parking garage downtown. Yeah, I'm, I'm still amazed at what I can do with a green screen. And these guys are, you know, water tanks, yeah. whatever, just making magic. So, and, you know, I kind of skipped ahead to another picture because it, you know, kind of related to the yeah. last one. But uh, I, I wanted to ask, you know, this is pretty much the same looking shot, except if you look, it has, uh, you know, subtle differences, which has the chain around her, her waist and That's you know, her a torso. That's a screenshot from her film where she was recreating the picture that you just saw. So oh, that, okay. Yeah. All right, gotcha. So that's a, that is a uh, that, that's significant. That is the recreation of your shot, mm -hmm. which yes, is amazing. Evelyn Gloria partially drowning because she had a hard time doing it. So she recreated your personal shot. Mm -hmm. how, how did she, I guess, how did she see that shot in the first place? It was through a contest. Her and Ron Howard did a photography contest where... Um, Photographers from around the country send in photos, and then movies or yeah, actors and actresses kind of selected the images they want to recreate for like small indie films. Wow, that is so cool! There you go. Oh, that's a good one. Um, we live next door to like this really old rustic house, and we decided to trespass a little bit. <laughs> there you go. About. <laughs> you can't get any straightforward than that. <laughs> But uh, that's for an editorial. Um, that's another local model. She actually lives in Phoenix City. I've seen a lot of these, and and, and I've really and I've never been like an uh, 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 advertising kind of guy, um, which I probably should be. But when I see stuff like this, and like some of the the the, the more recent, you know, more modern day ads that they have out there. Uh, it was, it's really neat because ads, you know, I guess ads and art have always gone together. But I've been seeing some really cool stuff, and that that's stellar. I really like that. Thanks. But you know, before we go to the next one, this is this is something. This is the reason that we we started the show is there is so much talent in the Chattahoochee Valley area that a lot of people don't know about. And and Sammy's a perfect example in the fact that he had shots that were you know recreated by you know uh, famous people down the road or you know mm -hmm. and he had to like he said he had to beat a, a lot of people uh in a contest to, to get that yeah. shown yeah and uh there, there's a lot of talent around here there is it's unbelievable it's another new york shot it's a little bit more risque but up yeah tasteful up there tasteful. anything all oh, right, yeah. <laughs> but here, yeah, we, yeah, we usually don't. Do stuff like that here, I was in Paris, and it just the 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 things on the on the road signs on the road, are, yeah, very different bottle wax. And once again, we had the shot. Actually, this this shot is, uh, I think, a duplicate. Yeah, I think so. We'll just try the next one. That, that that's my fault, guys. So. That's okay. That is Hannah. She is modeling for ASOS in London right now. Wow. She's another girl from the area. Actually, that amazes me. He He's mentioned several young ladies that were from the area that actually are modeling, you know, throughout mm -hmm. the, the world. I wrote a song about that very sort of thing. It, it's interesting because they're, they're like, I've been in music for the past, you know, however many years. 
and only now am I starting to you know really see a lot of the stuff that's not involved with music and there's a there's a hotbed of stuff in Columbus and like you go to New York and you you shoot so how far do you shoot um the do you travel a lot for it? the ooh it's <laughs> a good one I think the farthest we've gone is the Bahamas and we did a shoot there wow but yeah we're supposed to go to Japan next year, so we're trying to get stuff together for that. But we haven't really planned out exactly what we're going to do there just yet. No. Japan, that is awesome. Um, and and is it for a specific trip or purpose, or is it just you? Our friends go? getting married, and we're going to use that as an excuse to kind of venture out and do other things. Awesome, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, so he, he's <laughs> mixing business with pleasure. Yeah, yeah. and that's okay. that's awesome. I, I love that. Uh, what is what's been your favorite place that you've traveled to? What, what's your favorite place because it's uh, because it's uh, involved with you know work? What's your favorite place to work? New York, I love New York. There's so much inspiration there. Yeah. Um, I don't sleep at night, so no matter what time I want to go out and do something, there's always something going on. Yeah. And if I lived there, I would probably die from just not sleeping because <laughs> just wanted the streets all night. I totally understand, and and, you, and like everywhere you look is a backdrop for a picture too. It is. Um, before we go to the next commercial, uh, you got well, actually we have, yeah, actually we have one more picture on oh, okay. comment on because uh, this is another example of having everything in the right place. I don't know how much of this was Photoshop. Oh yeah, that was part of my thesis work. Um, it's actually coffee that we buried her in. See, there you go. Cool. I, it amazes me at the things they recreate. I never guys. would have picked up on that. Um, we, I would feel bad covering someone completely in dirt. <laughs> I took a picture of her covered in coffee, and then I took a picture of just regular dirt, and wow. I kind of collaged them together. But, wow, that one's really old. That's cool. Now... Yeah, you, you you know, I, I ask this of a lot of people uh, on the show and a lot of people that are, you know, still in the, the local scene or whatever, you are clearly far beyond that. You're still in the local scene, but you, you know, where would you like to see yourself in 20 years? Where would you like to go? Ooh, that's a good question. It's a really good question. I don't know. More money would be nice. <laughs> more money is always a good plan <laughs> right, there you go yeah. and he's going to have to have it seeing how he's going to have a wife by then <laughs> <laughs> things change very quickly <laughs> it's such an inconsistent industry um, one minute you'll be shooting something that you really don't want to do and in the next you're actually doing something you love but for me it's just shooting in bigger magazines or being in bigger magazines maybe traveling a lot more mm-hmm because I hate just standing in one spot for so long, I go crazy. Right, but I totally understand. Yeah, a little bit more traveling and maybe an actual place to like settle down would be mm -hmm. nice. Because we move like every year. What magazines? Bigger magazines? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and before we, we to go to a, another commercial, <laughs> where do you see photography going in the future? Do you see that? Uh, I guess, is it more, is going to grow more from having a photographer with an eye, or it's going to grow with the growing of technology? I would say more technology, just because it's so easy for someone to pick a camera up and just, you know, teach themselves everything. Because I have students that, they're shooting at a level that I could not imagine, and they just started like maybe a month ago. Oh, you say students, you're you actually teaching? I mentor for... Columbus High students. Oh, yeah, that's excellent. cool. That's very that's cool. cool. Great. And they pick it up and like, I teach them how to shoot in manual like a week, and they're already producing images that I could have couldn't have gotten when I started, just wow. because digital is so user friendly in a way. Yeah. yeah. And the cameras are getting smarter. Advice from an old man: the younger that they are, the more they know. <laughs> You'll that's get to a true. point where you're just going, "How do you do that?" That's the reason I'm so amazed. Yeah. Yeah. It's like. I, I'm, I'm an old guy. I play guitar, and I'm like, you know, all that fancy stuff. I don't even use pedals. <laughs> so yeah, hey, I'm, I'm doing radio. I'm not and, you know, we still hit vinyl. So right, yeah. Well, we're gonna bring up another commercial. Um, one thing as we're going out, what do you think? It, what do you think comes after digital? That's a good question. Um, they've been dabbling in 3D, 
Mm. Ooh. I don't know. I would say 3D is probably next. There's not much more. Right. Holograms. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I always ask the uh, the question, do you shoot in raw? I have no idea what that means. I just <laughs> ask because I say, hey, it sounds like it, but... Uh, you know, before you know, we're gonna go ahead and head out to commercial. When we come back, we want to, you know, ask Sammy as far as you know what his uh, social footprint is, and you know uh, where he would you know have everyone to go to see his business and and so forth. What I like to call the pimping section. There you go, guys. We'll be right back. Hello, I'm Catherine Childry with Let's Vocalize. For over 35 years, I've coached vocalists and groups privately. I also perform vocal workshops training choirs. I'd love the opportunity to show you how direction, discipline, vocal health care, and regular practice can drastically improve you, your group, or your choir's performance. Call me at 706-536-6123 or visit us online at www.letsvocalize.com. I'd love to help you offer your best gift. Yes, toddy, the chocolate malt in a can. It's so good hot. It's so good cold. It hits the spot with young and old. Yes, toddy pleases everybody. Delicious chocolate malted toddy made with rich, real milk, not powdered milk. So come and get it, everybody. It's time to drink your chocolate toddy. Mmm, delicious. Hello and welcome back to the show, special guest Sammy Saxon. So uh, we're going to, like Tim said before we went to a commercial, uh, we're going to talk about the uh, your social footprint. Where can people find you? Well, I'd like to get everything into one little file folder so people can you know easily get in there. Um, where are you? Um, a website, um, which I update from time to time, actually. My Instagram is probably the biggest way to see my current work or what I'm up to. Gotcha. And, you know, this is updated by his soon-to-be wife, who will not get on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, was, I was looking at it earlier, uh, Sammy, and it, it seems to pretty much have everything as far as, you know, anything from editorials to uh, going from any social media that you do. Uh, and you know models videos mm-hmm. that he does and so forth and so on so it's, it's you know pretty uh um pretty uh i can't even speak this morning I, I i was running this morning but it's pretty comprehensive website yeah and it's a very nice one too and it's interactive it's got like the uh, 3d stuff on there you have to check it out and of course facebook instagram yeah all the typical ones i hate social media but she she loves all that stuff, so she's better at it. Now, question: Do you ever model? It's interesting because it's because you know sometimes you know you have uh, like my hero John Stewart. He and his wife both sang uh, and worked together for years and years and years. Uh, sometimes you have uh, a couple that one does something and the other one has nothing to do with it at all. It's interesting. It's just she's, interesting to find out. She's actually my makeup mm-hmm. artist. That's basically the biggest seller on her and a great job you do too <laughs> she yeah every, most of it, pretty much all the shoots we do she's there to assist and do makeup yeah, cool now um one question i ask of all my uh, guests uh what advice would you give to aspiring artists or photographers um don't get discouraged like i started out with basically nothing like, I would have to use, or everything used, everything kind of broken, and I had to kind of play around with it. My Photoshop was bootlegged. <laughs> but over time, I was able to get better things. Right. And I still don't get the most expensive cameras or lenses or anything because I just break them. <laughs> but it's the message that you're trying to convey. Just find equipment and tools that, you know, you can push out your message with. Mm-hmm. It's not about the most expensive camera, the most expensive computer. It's just find something that you can put 
your views and your message into without compromising. That's that's something I've, I've thought because I have a I've, I've done some recording of people and I've always said that it doesn't matter what you record on is what the end product sounds like. Exactly. Uh, so it's like the you don't need as long as long as would you say as long as the equipment brings the image you're looking for then that's what you should do. Just whatever you can use. I mean, it, like. There's cheaper solutions to everything, and I, I preach that just because I'll see someone bringing like a camera that's like, or one of my students are bringing a camera that's like more expensive than the one I own, right. and they don't know how to use it. So, you know, in learning how to use that camera, I also look at mine and go, oh, well, I still like mine a lot better, even though this one is yeah. more um, current. But it's just whatever you're comfortable with, whatever you can learn how to use on your own is I'm rambling <laughs> and it's like as far as like anybody who's ever used software knows that an upgrade is not always necessarily a good thing <laughs> no, no you know I, I, I it's just like this show I mean you know we, we are far from using the best equipment I mean you know, I have just a couple of webcams in here and some lighting yeah. and uh, you know but it's just like most of the artists we have on and, and their biases just do it just you know, do it. Just do it. Whatever you have, just do it. Best slogan I've ever heard, and uh, I'm not a sports fan at all, but that is true. Just do it. Um, when you first, uh, this this is something that's interesting to me, and not not this is just really just a, a point of interest for myself. But how was it for you going from just like shooting around or everything, uh, doing you know the local stuff? To getting to a point where you could go to New York and shoot for something, was there is that like just a wild, crazy dream come true? Um, it was a lot. It was an easier tra transition to begin with, just because here you meet so many interesting people, mm -hmm. and there everything is like straight to the point. People don't care to like know much about your background or anything. It's just do the job, get out. But just being able to work with people here kind of prepared me for that I guess in a way yeah. because there's nicer people here but there's also nicer people up there but you know I don't know <laughs> I guess what I was getting at is jumping from say the the local scene to what some people would call the big leagues is it like was it like winning the lottery or was it like uh, finally getting that big contract or? it was exciting just I, I never really allow myself to see it as that just because I don't want to become too big headed about it. It's totally just understand. remain modest and just treat the people here the same way you treat the people there and treat the people there the same way you treat them here. Just be yourself and not overdo it because, you know, it's an overly competitive market. Yeah. And if I were to just yell out, hey, I shoot in New York a lot, you know. I, I just can't. I don't like being too cocky. Right, and that's but. good. That's uh, I admire that. But you know, I have a uh, I have a stepson who uh, he actually used to live with us. He, he's from Columbus, and uh, he uh, headed out to I want to say Texas first. And uh, he's a musician, and he thought, well, hey, that's you know it's the place. Uh, and then now he's ended up in. Uh, Los Angeles and he's, he's he's very talented and he's doing well don't get me yeah. wrong but uh, he found out very quickly it doesn't matter where you go uh, that you know there's I mean there's a lot of people I guess you, go, you ask any actor that they're going to be in uh, New York or, or whatever hotbed that most of them are waiting tables right now yeah, and you know, I, I guess one of his biggest assets I'm talking about Sammy one of his biggest assets is this young lady sitting back here because it, these days, it doesn't matter really where you're at. As long as you can network with the right people, then she knows how to send his work so yeah. he can be in Timbuktu and mm -hmm. still get his work out to someone. Yeah. Yeah, she does all that for me. Or tells me when to do it because I just... Sammy's like me. She said, I want to raise. That's what she said. <laughs> Sammy's like me with talent. But he's like, he, he's got all this great stuff going on. But he doesn't, it's like for me, I, I have no marketing skills. 
like none whatsoever. I have no idea. You know, and I'm like, I have no idea how to get do all that stuff. And uh, that's very important. And uh, that's really. I'm rambling now. I want to say thank you to Sammy for coming thank on the you show. Thank you for having me. And uh, love your work. Always have. And uh, I've really you. admired you uh, over the years that I've seen you around and seen your work. And it's been more than a pleasure to have you on the show. Yeah, thank, thank you. you thank me. you very much for dropping by. It's a very interesting conversation. Thank you. Thank for ha- maybe, thanks maybe for having me. Maybe My we pleasure. can have him back on because, you know, I, I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, Brian sat there and said, well, we're going to have Sammy Sack. I had never heard of him. I had <laughs> not, you know. But then again, these days, I can't hear much of anything. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, and then, he, and then he comes on and he's just really, he kind of blows me away. Uh, looking at his work and then, you know, the contacts he's made and, and so forth and so on. So. Yeah. That just goes to show you guys, you need oh, to yeah. watch I'm the show. An art show. He's going to have an art show. I'm working on stuff for that now. I'm just trying to figure out exactly what I want to put in it because here things aren't as... It's a little bit more conservative here, yeah. but if I do it in New York, then I can do whatever I want. So I'm trying to like filter it out and censor some things, but it'll, it'll be here. Cool. So it's just in the process of getting done. Exactly. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll keep track of that, guys. And uh, as it develops, we will put it on the page, uh, the show's webpage. And I'm sure uh, Sammy will have it on his webpage. Yeah. And, uh, you know, needless to say, we'll help him out, get the word out about that. Excellent. We would definitely do that. And uh, maybe bring him back on for his art one, type, one day instead of uh, uh, since we've had him on for the photography. But until next time, I'm your host, Brian Mallard. We got Tim over there behind the controls, and we got Sammy Saxon here. And we'll see you next time on the show. And before we go, we want to wish each and every one of you a very, I shouldn't say very Merry Christmas, but a <laughs> very nice Thanksgiving. Yeah, Happy Thanksgiving to you all. <laughs>